if I replaced all the bottom line with just a single lint of wire, so I brought that down here, and I just used a single lint of wire from there to there, and we used the same notation. This was A, B, what was this? C. 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 D. Yeah. yeah, that was it. Now. Yeah. There is a certain resistance that's called this A down as far as here. A, B, let's call my C down here. I should have used it straight across there. It doesn't make any difference. There is a resistance between A and D, yes? It's just so I just put in a lint of wire. Any wire, doesn't matter. I just want it to be a uniform lint, right? There is, and we call this R3, which is the resistance associated with that wire. And I could call this guy here R4, which is the resistance associated with... Why is it not the same? That lint of wire. Why is R3 yeah, and R4? The same wire. It's remember when I had my two resistors here? Yeah. Were the two resistors down at the bottom the same? No. No, and the two resistors up here aren't necessarily the same. So remember I said you chop and change all different types of resistors until yeah. it works out. And here you're just gonna chop and change the lint. Instead of putting that lint there, you're going to move that lint over and back. Until it's just like moving it along a resistor. You're increasing the resistance of R4, but you're decreasing the resistance of R3. And you'll keep doing that until what? Oh, so it's the galvanometer. Until this guy here no longer deflects. The galvanometer is because it's not in the center? This guy here, yeah, this guy here won't be in the center. That's right. Yeah, you can move it all the way over there. But if it was in the center, it would be. If, well, it also depends on these two guys. If those two guys were equal, and these two guys were equal, and they were all the same, then it would be in the center. Oh, okay. But you're right, because these are all over the place, we don't know what those are, this guy here would be equal. So now, my formula as before, basically this is like a resistor. It's R1 over R2 equals R3 over R4. But now what we're going to say is we're not going to even look at those resistances. We're going to use, so we're not going to use that. We're going to say, well, R3, what can I say about the relationship between a resistance and length of a wire? As in, is one, is the resistance equal to the sine of the length of the wire? Is it the length of the wire squared? It's directly proportional. It's directly proportional. And we, we looked at this and we did resistivity and we're going to look at it again later on. So if I double the length of the wire, what will happen to the resistance? It will double the resistance. That's fairly straightforward, right? There's a certain resistance here. If I double the length of it, I want to double the resistance, right? So if I said R3 is proportional to the length AD, how can I get rid of my proportional sign? Put in a constant. It's equal to constant times the length AD, right? So that is what it implies there. Now we come down to here. R4. What's the relationship between R4 and the length DC? It's also proportional. Will it be the same proportional constant? Oh, oh yeah. Because? Because it's directly proportional. Uh, yeah, because it's the same wire. We're just moving along the wire. So it's the same proportional constant. So R4, sorry, equals K times DC. I should have said it's proportional to DC. Therefore, R4 is equal to K times DC. Okay, so far? Okay. This bit is important. Again, I don't think you have to remember it, but you will have to use the next line we're going to finish up with. So now, where I had R1 over R2 equals R3 over R4, I'm now going to say R1 over R2 equals, what do I say instead of R3? K, K times the length AD over R4, which is? K times DC. What can I do to make that a little bit simpler? Cross Before I cross multiply? Cancel. What's it, Connor? Cancel the case. Cancel the case. It's the same case, the same proportional constant because it's the same wire. So now I've got R1 over R2 equals the length AD over the length DC. So now, rather than chopping and changing resistors, all I've got to have are two resistors up there. And let's say I don't know the resistance of one but I do know the resistance of the other one. I just set them up like this, where I know the resistance of one of them, attach them to a long wire, and it's important that the wire is uniform and diameter because we're assuming it's the same proportional constant, so it's got to be a fairly well-designed wire. 
And all you do then is move the, the uh, galvanometer connection over and back until such time as you get what? No deflection. No deflection. Therefore, there's no current. Therefore, the same derivation applies before as would apply now. When this happens, by the way, in, in, in case you are ever expressing it or talking about it, we use the phrase the bridge is balanced. When there's no current going through here, we say the bridge is balanced. So once again, you now have this formula. So all you need to find an unknown resistor, the value of an unknown resistor, is to have one other one where you do know the value and a length of oil. And you're going to break it up into a couple of bits and pieces. And we say there's more applications in this. This is a highfalutin way of just finding the resistance of a wire. Oh, but there is some uh, application of it which we'll see in a minute. So, while I'm talking about it, let's come back and demonstrate it. 